everyone, my name is Jessie Jennings and I'm a content creator here at Plaid and today we have a really exciting video. It is one that you guys have been asking for for a long time because today we're going to go over all 20 of our Mod Podge formulas that we have in the Mod Podge family. So it's May this week um, and if you guys have been watching for a long time you'll know that May is National Mod Podge Month. So we celebrate Mod Podge Day every year. This year it falls on May 20th so make sure to join us for lots of fun live streams that day too. But all month long, we'll be talking about Mod Podge. So like I said, today's an, a, a super exciting one because we're talking about every single formula. A lot of formulas you guys are familiar with, some you may be wondering about, and some you maybe have never even heard of. So we're super excited. We're gonna go through the features and benefits of each, and then some of the things um, Emma and I love to do with those formulas and love um, different crafts that we like to make with them. So we've got Emma Panuski here in the studio, and we're gonna kind of bounce back and forth talking about each formula. Um, and I do have my phone here, so if you guys have questions or comments, please make sure to put them in the chat because now is your chance to interact and ask all of those burning Mod Podge questions you have, and we'll be happy to answer and clear some things up for you. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Emma. Awesome. Thanks, Jesse. So my name is Emma Panuski. I'm a content creator here at Plaid, and uh, welcome to our little Mod Podge live stream in honor of May National Mod Podge Month. So we wouldn't have Mod Podge without Jan Whetstone. Jan Whetstone was an Atlanta-based interior designer who created Mod Podge in the 1970s. She wanted to make decoupage really easy for everybody to use, and she wanted people to actually enjoy the process of decoupage instead of having to varnish your project and then continuously sand it in between, she made a formula of decoupage medium that brought decoupage to the masses. And we are eternally grateful to uh, Ms. Whetstone for doing that because if it weren't for her, we wouldn't have Mod Podge. So thank you, Jan. Um, but if you don't know, Mod Podge is a uh, kind of a nickname for the title Modern Decoupage. So a common misconception is that pe people think that it's called Mod Podge. Which makes sense because it rolls off the tongue because it rhymes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but you're saying it wrong. It is Mod Podge for Modern Decoupage. So that is a little backstory behind the history of Mod Podge, which we're always so excited to share. Um, so let's get started with our very first Mod Podge formulas. If you uh, don't even know what Mod Podge is, Mod Podge is America's favorite uh, glue, sealer, and finish. So we have three excellent starter formulas in our original Mod Podge formula, and they come in three beautiful sheens. We have our matte, satin, and gloss. And the great thing about these three original formulas is that they are available in a variety of different sizes. We have our eight ounce here, but then if you look to the left of me, we have our four ounce, our 16 ounce, 32 ounce, 64 ounce, and then we also have a huge, a whopping gallon size <laughs> Mod Podge. So we have the perfect size Mod Podge for however big your project is, or however many Mod Podge projects that you are planning on making. So that's really exciting. We have so many different sizes in these three beautiful sheens. Um, and uh, the great thing about these different sizes is that they're really great for lots of different environments. Jesse and I were talking earlier how um, the gallon size Mod Podge is really great for classrooms. And then our eight ounce here is just great to have in your own personal crafting area. So we have those three great ones right here. And um, kind of branching out a little bit, we have Mod Podge Gloss Washout for Kids. So this is a really, really fun one. Of course, it is great for smaller hands to use. Uh, the great thing about it is just like in the name, it's washable. <laughs> so when kids are working with this or really working with any type of craft supply, they tend to uh, get a little bit messy if you've ever <laughs> crafted with a kid before. So the great thing about this formula is that if they get it on their clothes, it is actually washable in the washing machine. So if it gets on fabric, it'll wash out, but it'll stay on whatever projects you're making. Um, another great use that we love to use our Mod Podge Washout for Kids is 
is we like to use it as actually a paint resist. So you can actually go ahead and paint a pattern onto your fabric project, let that dry, um, then use whatever multi-surface or fabric paint you want on top of your Mod Podge washout for kids. And then once that's dry, you can stick it in your washing machine. The Mod Podge will wash out, leaving that negative space on your project, which is really, really cool and a really fun um, project to try. So that is another use we love for our Mod Podge washout for kids. And here I have this sweet little project just to show you guys the, the product in use. I and love that one, that's so fun. I know, it's really, really cute. And of course it has that beautiful glossy sheen. Yeah, and so really quick and we've got lots of questions rolling in um, about what is the strongest Mod Podge, what Mod Podge use outside. So I just want to remind you guys, we're going to go through every single formula. So I love that you have questions and we are so excited to answer them. And we promise we have a Mod Podge formula for every craft you'll be doing. So if you just stay tuned, we'll talk about some of those, which are best for outside, which are great for dishwasher, which are great for fabric and so on. So just stay tuned and I promise we'll answer all of your questions as we go. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I can't wait to hear those questions yeah. as we get down the line. <laughs> Hopefully we'll answer them for you all yeah, today. Yeah, we will for sure. Yeah. So moving on our docket here for today, we are going to be talking about next our Mod Podge Ultra formula, which I believe you have over there, Jesse. I do, yes. Um, so this is one of my very favorite formulas. Um, I was here at Plaid when this formula was invented and it was super exciting. It was only a few years ago. Um, for the longest time, you guys have been asking us for a spray on Mod Podge to avoid brush strokes. So we've been asked for years for a formula that does that. So what we did to answer that problem is to invent Mod Podge Ultra. So what Mod Podge Ultra is, you can see here, it is a spray formula. It comes in this spritz bottle. So like most of our Mod Podge formulas, it is still water-based and non-toxic. So a lot of aerosol cans are not um, non-toxic, I should say, mm -hmm. and are not water-based. So this one's really safe and it's good to use. You can still use it inside and things like that. You don't have to work in a well-ventilated area, which is big for a spray. But it still has all of the really great um, components that a lot of those really strong sealers have. So you can use this like our original formulas for decoupaging paper, napkins, whatever kind of um, things you're decoupaging with at home. But you can also use this as an awesome sealer. So if you're an acrylic painter or if you are a, even an oil painter, you can use Mod Podge Ultra as a varnish and it will really seal and protect your paintings over time. So probably one of my favorite things of all about Mod Podge Ultra, this, this formula specifically does so many things, um, but it also works as a great adhesive. So it is a super duper strong adhesive. It will bond together um, some fairly heavy pieces as far as crafting goes. So here's an example, this mosaic tray here. We took a tray and we painted it. We sprayed some Mod Podge Ultra into the tray. And then we took all these glass and ceramic tiles. So if you think about it, those are fairly heavy and we um, laid them out into our tray and then did another uh, very generous coat of Mod Podge Ultra and it sealed them all in. So that is so exciting. You can see here, they're basically embedded. It's, it's kind of like resin, but for super shallow um, sort of examples like this. Um, another great thing about Mod Podge Ultra is that it's water resistant. So what that means is you can use it outside. So you can put it outdoors. Um, the rain and the sun will not affect it. You can use it on birdhouses and terracotta pots and planters and all kinds of things like that. So that's another really great um, use for our Mod Podge Ultra. And it also works as a stiffener. So like, the, like I said, the list keeps going for this one. If you guys are familiar with Stiffy, we all love our Mod Podge Stiffy. We all love you know, um, stiffening our doilies and making those really fun cheesecloth ghosts at Halloween time. Um, but this works great for stiffening all of your fiber arts as well. So you can see here, it comes in a gloss and a matte finish. And it also comes in this eight ounce formula and the four ounce size. So depending on what you're crafting or depending on what you're planning on crafting, if you think you'll be using a lot of it, you can kind of choose the size that best fits your needs. So yeah, that's Mod Podge Ultra. Very cool. Thanks, yeah, Jess. Sure thing. Um, I love Mod Podge Ultra. Um, another great benefit to Mod Podge Ultra is that it is a fantastic sealer for all of your artwork. Whether you're working with acrylic paint or um, oils, um, it is a really great sealer for your artwork as well. We love to yeah. use that. And, and it's, it's self-leveling. We have a couple quick questions about Mod Podge Ultra from Brenda. Um, they said, can you use it to spray a photo and put in resin? So I'm wondering if what you mean is to seal a photo before putting it into resin. And I think as long as you let it dry really well, that should work. If you want to spray your photo to kind of seal it, 
um, and give it a little extra protection before you were to embed it in some resin, which we'll talk about in a little bit. <laughs> um, I think that would work well. And they asked for flowers as well. I think you could definitely, you could probably just put your flowers straight into the resin, but if you wanted to really give it that extra protection, I would definitely try spraying it with Mod Podge Ultra first. I think that would work really well. Yeah, or you could embed um, your flowers with Mod Podge Ultra to a project. True, yeah, definitely. You don't even need the resin. <laughs> yeah, forget the resin. Just <laughs> use your Ultra. Just kidding. Okay, so next we are going to be talking about three awesome photo transfer formulas in our Mod Podge family. So uh, first up, we have Photo Transfer Medium, which is uh, really great. First of all, I should say that it's multi-surface. It works great on metal and glass and wood, but what sets this apart from some of our other formulas is that it works really great on fabric. Um, and I'll show you guys an example of that. One great thing about it is that it keeps your fabric super pliable and super soft, which is um, very unusual to find in image transfer prod products. So we have our photo transfer medium. Um, and then we also have our image transfer medium. So they're both great multi-surface formulas to use for your image transfer needs. And I'll set them like this so you guys can get a good viewing. But the one thing that sets them apart is that um, you can see here, you see some of this wood grain pattern peeking through our image here. And that's what's so unique about our Mod Podge image transfer medium is that when you transfer your photo onto your surface, you're gonna get a little bit of that background peeking through. So you get that really beautiful, rustic, home decor look. As opposed to our photo transfer medium, you get the full vibrancy of your color and you don't see your surface peeking through. So this is on another wood coaster, yet we don't see any wood grain. All we see is that beautiful family photo. That's a great example. Yeah. Okay, so um, another uh, exciting addition to the Mod Podge photo transfer family is our Mod Podge uh, photo transfer heat tool. So just like it sounds, you just plug it into your outlet and then it has this little tip at the top of the tool um, that you rub onto your um, paper, which is on top of your surface, and it transfers your photo beautifully onto whatever surface you want to. And the great thing about this is that it works really great on wood and leather and canvas and fabric. It is also um, a multi-surface use. So um, we made this sweet little leather tag with our heat transfer tool, and you guys can see just how beautifully it transferred onto our leather. I love that. And something to keep in mind with all of these photo transfer um, tools and formulas is a question we get a lot. You have to use an image that has been printed with dry toner. Um, it cannot be an inkjet printer. So most likely whatever printer you have at home is an inkjet printer. So you wanna make sure to reverse your image and take it to a photo um, printing place like a Kinko's or whatever you have near you that does that sort of thing. You can get it at Walmart and all kinds of places. Um, just for a few cents, you can get your um, print printed. Like I said, you want to make sure to reverse it, especially if there's words and stuff, um, on dry ink toner. So just something to keep in mind for all of those formulas. Yeah, that's a great point, Jesse. Um, so if you don't have a dry toner uh, printer in your own home, like Jesse said, you can go to any printing shop and get your images printed really inexpensively. Mm -hmm. Super easy to do. So, Jesse, which formula would you use to make one of your Mod Podge projects dishwasher safe? Oh, well, that's a great question, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> so we actually had um, the Mug Life DIY is really active in the chat, so I wanted to say hey to you. Um, they mentioned they like to use this particular formula for outside projects, which is kind of interesting. I could see how that would work. Um, but the next formula we're going to talk about is our Mod Podge dishwasher safe. So this is one of our favorites. You can always kind of tell the formula because we have all these different colors to kind of uh, signify which Mod Podge formula is which because they all come in really similar bottles or a lot of them do anyway. This one comes in this pretty teal colored bottle. Um, and what is great about Mod Podge Dishwasher Safe is just like the name, it, is, it makes all of your decoupage and Mod Podge projects safe for the dishwasher. So um, I have some examples here. I have this really cute mug. We took some cardstock, and just like any of your other Mod Podge projects, we decoupaged it onto the mug, and now this is top rack dishwasher safe. 
So you can put it into the dishwasher with the rest of your um, dishes and it is totally safe. It will not affect your other dishes and your project will not come apart. It will stay intact, which is so, so, so cool. Um, here's another example of the dishwasher safe. We took some napkins and we put it on this clear mug and you can still see how clear it is. Like all of our Mod Podge formulas, it dries super clear. So a really cool example of this. Um, something to keep in mind for dishwasher safe is while it is water-based and non-toxic, it is not food safe. So you do wanna make sure you are not putting the dishwasher safe formula anywhere where your food will be touching or they'll be touching your mouth. So mugs are a great example of this because you just wanna stay away from the lip of the mug where you'll be putting your mouth. Um, decorative plates though, you can put them on tumblers. Everybody's been uh, crafting with tumblers the past couple years. That's a really great use for our dishwasher safe, um, but just something to keep in mind. There are so, so, so many projects you can do using this formula. Awesome. Did I miss anything? No, I think you covered it all. That <laughs> okay, was cool. uh, yeah, pretty inclusive there. <laughs> well, um, like I was gonna say really quick, you can see why this, I bet this would work really well outside because hey, if it can stand up to the dishwasher, it most likely can stand up to the elements. So that's a really good idea. Totally, it's water resistant. And I'm yeah. glad that we're talking about uh, how to make your projects outdoor safe, Jesse, because we have a really wonderful formula to help make all of your decoupage projects uh, weather resistant and safe to put on your patio or your deck, really just to make them outdoor safe. Um, so Jesse is gonna share with us some or, or do I have it? Have I it. have it. <laughs> oh, I was like, I'm I am. share with you um, some, a little bit about our Mod Podge outdoor formula. So like Jesse said, a lot of our Mod Podge formulas are color coded. So we have this beautiful hunter green to represent our outdoor safe formula. And similar to our dishwasher safe formula, this is water resistant. So once you glue whatever you are adhering to your projects and then you seal it, they are then safe to put outdoors on your porch, on your patio. Um, here you can see we made some beautiful birdhouses with some scrapbook paper. We made this really cute terracotta pot with some napkins and then we painted on top of it so, you know, it doesn't just have to stop once you are uh, actually decoupaging. These, like we say, they're great glues, sealers, and finishes. So you don't even have to glue with them. You can just use them to seal some of your painted projects that you want to paint and then put outside. They're a great all-around sealer. So we have this sweet terracotta pot. We have this uh, really sweet watering can. And then it's also great to make some beautiful signage to put outside to kind of uh, uh, spruce up your outdoor decor. Okay, so that is our, did I miss anything with our outdoor formula? I know, formula? I think that was great. I think that was great. That's another one of our favorite ones because you can, like Emma said, you can do birdhouses and pots and even your pots for inside. A lot of people are worried about decoupaging on their indoor planters because when you water it, it could ruin your project. So you even could steal your indoor pots too because that will protect it from the water just when you're watering your plants. Um, another big one that is so popular now is rocks. Did you mention rocks? Oh, I did not mention so rocks. rock painting and now rock decoupaging to leave around. I'll let you go ahead and get into it. Yes, okay, so uh, painting and crafting on rocks has been a huge trend in the past couple of years. Um, people love to craft on rocks and then leave them in community spaces for other people to find and for it to brighten their day. So a lot of people are painting rocks, but did you know that you could also Mod Podge on rocks and then make them safe to be placed outdoors for your community to find? So we love uh, using Mod Podge outdoor on rocks, on birdhouses, terracotta pots, uh, watering cans, and then even signs and vases. You can bring the indoors outdoors and you can seal it with Mod Podge outdoor. So love that's that. super exciting. Um, so that is all about Mod Podge outdoor. Next is one of our, I know we're going to keep saying this, Jesse. This is our favorite formula. <laughs> we have a lot of favorites. Is, yeah, we have a lot of favorites. Um, but our next one that we're going to be talking about is Mod Podge fabric, which I have right here, which comes in this uh, blue label here. So we love Mod Podge fabric because it really takes, um, it really makes making fabric projects very easy. Mm -hmm. You can cut out appliques out of uh, scraps of fabric and then adhere them onto um, fashion pieces or pillows, whatever type of fabric project that you want to make. You can make some really great no-sew crafting with this Mod Podge fabric. Um, if you don't know how to sew or you're not that great at sewing and you want to make some fabric projects, then this is a really great formula for you. Here we have this really cute little uh, tennis shoe. 
that we used our uh, fabric Mod Podge with. All we did is we sized the piece of fabric that we wanted to cut out and then we adhered it to our shoe here. And it is super, super durable um, and it's really pliable. That's another great benefit of our fabric Mod Podge is that it keeps that fabric really pliable, really soft, and it prevents it from cracking or wrinkling like another Mod Podge formula might. And you can adhere fabric to fabric, you can adhere paper to fabric, uh, napkins to fabric, whatever you want. Um, this is just your go-to fabric formula. Um, and another great thing, another great uh, purpose for our Mod Podge fabric is that it takes the fraying out of any of your fabric crafting. So what you want to do is you want to lay a uh, coat of your fabric Mod Podge onto a, a piece of fabric. And then once you cut into that piece of fabric, once it's totally dry, it's not gonna fray at all. You don't even have to use fabric scissors or really sharp scissors. You can use, um, you know, crummy little crafty scissors <laughs> and your fabric is not going to fray, which is huge if you are crafting with fabric. Um, so yeah, that is our Mod Podge fabric. You missed one of the biggest parts that is so exciting. You can throw it in the washing machine. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> we are so used to these Mod Podge formulas, you forget the best parts. So the best part, in my opinion, kind of reminds me of Dishwasher Save, is that you can do appliques like Emma said, you can do all those things. I've even heard of people hemming their pants with it. Yeah. So they'll cut their jeans or their pants and then they'll use that um, instead of like a seam glue or whatever, they'll use Mod Podge fabric. And then you can throw it in the washing machine and it won't hurt your project. So that is huge because we often say if you made, hand made it, you should hand wash it, but I'm really impatient. So if I can throw it in the washing machine, that is way better in my opinion. Yes, absolutely. Um, and it's, you know, one of my favorite things to do with Mod Podge fabric, you could make patches and adhere mm -hmm. them to baseball caps and bucket hats and denim jeans. And it really, the projects you can make with Mod Podge fabric are endless. For sure. Um, so Jesse, on to our next formula. Can you guess what it is? I think it's gonna be paper. It is going to be paper. <laughs> okay. um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about our Mod Podge paper. So this one I think confuses a lot of people because, you know, really our Mod Podge was invented for paper, for decoupaging, which means applying paper to your projects using an adhesive. Um, but what is great about this one is that it is acid free. So this is really awesome for you paper crafters out there. We know you're there and we know that you um, are probably dying to use Mod Podge but you're probably very careful about what kind of adhesives you use in your paper crafting because you wanna make sure that it will last for a very, very long time without affecting your project. So Mod Podge paper is awesome for paper to paper crafting. And like I said, it is acid free. So if you put it in your scrapbook or your keepsake books or whatever it is that you like to paper craft at home, um, it will not uh, degrade yellow. over yeah. time. It will not yellow or degrade over time, exactly. It will, it will hold up over time. So that is a great, great formula that I think a lot of people probably don't know about, and that's Mod Podge paper. Yeah, that was a great little uh, summary of Mod Podge paper, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so on to another exciting formula. We have a beautiful Mod Podge antique mat formula. So there are some, um, some sleepers in the Mod Podge family that I feel like a lot of people don't know about. So this is a really great formula. You can use it like any most other Mod Podges as a glue or a finish. And the thing about this is that it has a beautiful antique um, uh, finish to it. So whenever you are decoupaging your Mod Podge project, you can brush this onto your project and then it gives it this really beautiful, um, rustic looking antique feel. So um, it, it what am I say, trying to say here, <laughs> Jesse? It, uh, uh, it makes your projects look really vintage, yes, really vintage. antiqued. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a, uh, maybe a Mod Podge formula that you have uh, never heard of before. Um, and like all of these Mod Podge formulas, if you are interested in any of these formulas, you want to know even more about them, or you want to pick some up for yourself, then you can go to platonline.com to get any of these products that we talk about today and to learn more about it, to find our Mod Podge catalog and for project ideas and inspiration. Awesome. Okay, so Jesse, our next formula, I think you have it. I do We're going to be it. talking about super gloss. Yes. So, um, like we mentioned in the beginning, <clears throat> our original formula has three awesome sheens. We have it in matte, satin, and gloss. 
but did you also know that we have a formula called super gloss? So just like the title, this gives you a beautiful, super duper glossy finish. So it's a little bit thicker than some of our other Mod Podge formulas. You'll see that when you're working with it. Um, it has no brush strokes, which is really awesome because if you guys know, if you seal a lot of furniture or craft projects, you know a lot of times the glossier the varnish or sealer, the more brush strokes you're likely to get. So with this one, there's no brush strokes. You get a beautiful, smooth, glass-like finish for your projects. So that's really just, that's what this one is. It really reminds me of the original formulas, but you get that super duper smooth glass-like sheen when you're done. So this one is Mod Podge Super Gloss, and it comes in this dark teal color. So if you're at the store, you know what to look for. Awesome, Jesse. Okay, so I'm super excited to talk about this next grouping of Mod Podge formulas. We have a huge variety of sparkle and glitter Mod Podge formulas for you all to choose from. So starting with the basics, we have Mod Podge Sparkle, which gives off a really beautiful, uh, of course, sparkly sheen to any Mod Podge project. Um, this is one of our most um, subtle Mod Podge glitter formulas. It has really fine particles of glitter inside the Mod Podge so that when you apply it to your project, you get that really beautiful iridescent finish that you would want. Okay, so moving on, we have our Mod Podge Extreme Glitter, which is similar to our Mod Podge Sparkle, except those particles of glitter that you're gonna find in it are a little bit larger, so you get um, a little bit of a chunkier glitter, um, and it really draws your eye to your project. So uh, that's really the main difference between our Sparkle and our Extreme Glitter. Also Extreme Glitter, I love that it comes in different colors of glitter too. That's kind of a notable part of that particular formula. It comes in gold, silver, and hologram, which is really awesome. Our Mega Glitter, yeah. Our Mega Glitter, yeah. Yes, totally. So like Jesse was saying, our third glitter formula oh, sorry, is... sorry, I'm, I'm mixed up. I thought you were talking <laughs> about Mega You're Glitter. You're ahead of us, Jesse. There's so many awesome <laughs> glitter formulas. <laughs> yes, so um, our Extreme Glitter is kind of in the middle of our Sparkle and our Mega Glitter in the particle size of our glitters. Um, and then the, the biggest one, we have our mega glitter just like jesse was saying and it comes in three different varieties three different colors you have your hologram right here we have our silver and gold and i'll show you guys we have this pretty little pot here that we put some of our mod podge sparkle on so you can see just how sparkly that is um, and it really adds some some vibrancy to your projects. Yeah. And one, of course, great thing, we love to Mod Podge with glitter, but if you've ever crafted with glitter before, you know that glitter will end up all over your workspace if you craft with glitter. So one of the best things about our Mod Podge glitter formulas is that it takes the mess out of crafting with glitter. You won't find loose particles of glitter all over your workstation anymore. It keeps it contained in our Mod Podge formula, in that Mod Podge base, so that you don't have to worry about such a, a crazy cleanup afterwards. Yeah. Mess free, which we love. Yes, absolutely. So those are all of our glitter formulas. Um, and next is another really awesome formula for um, all of you uh, designers out there, maybe <laughs> interior designers, amateur interior designers. We're gonna be talking about our Mod Podge furniture. Yeah, really quick before we get to that, we have a couple comments. Um, Kimberly said, I love that there are so many formulas. I need to try more of them. Yes, you do. Like I said, I'm sure there's lots of these formulas you guys didn't even know about. So we're excited to share them with you today. Um, and they also said my favorite one is the sparkle one. So I don't blame you. Awesome. That's, a, that's a fun one. <laughs> for sure. Okay. And um, our glitters are really great for seasonal crafting. They're yeah. great for crafting for uh, like uh, Christmas and Hanukkah and Easter. And um, they're just really, they feel really festive. Yeah, I don't know why. Do. Glitter gets me thinking about the holidays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Thanks, Sam. Okay, so the next formula I want to share with you guys is our hard coat. And that is right here. So this is our Mod Podge Hard Coat. This one comes in a purple bottle. So you can see it's kind of a lighter purple. And this one is great for um, when you need something just a little bit more durable. So maybe it's something like a organizer for your desk or something that's gonna get a good bit of wear and tear. You wanna go ahead and you can, you know, kind of do your crafting with some of the original formulas if you prefer, but then you wanna use Hard Coat to give it that final seal. So maybe like, like bookshelves or something like that if you're planning on, um, you know, something you're gonna use a lot in, in life, okay? So not just for decorative purposes. <laughs> hard coat is the formula you wanna use for that. So 
like I said, bookshelves is a great example, you know, desk surfaces and things like that where you're really going to be moving stuff around on it and using it day to day. Um, look for this purple bottle. And then kind of in conjunction with that one, the next one I want to talk about is our Mod Podge furniture. So hard coat is when you need it a little bit more durable. Furniture is when you want that maximum durability. So like the title says, if you are planning on doing a step stool or a dresser or something that's getting a lot of wear and tear, that's when you want to go for the Mod Podge furniture because um, this is going to protect it really well over time in high trafficked areas. So um, this one has a nice gloss finish. So keep in mind when you're crafting, if you want that gloss finish, this is the one, the one to go to. Um, but this is really important for, um, like I said, for that super, super durability that you may need for your crafting. So like Emma said, this is great for interior designers. If you're wanting to decoupage furniture or really, you know, um, high traffic sort of pieces for your home, this is a really great formula for that. Yeah, great. Okay, so we have covered a lot of Mod Podge formula so far, <laughs> but if you are inspired by this and you want to dabble a little bit into a bunch of different Mod Podge formulas, then we have a really great Mod Podge starter kit for you. So it comes with five different formulas of Mod Podge, each in a two ounce size in this uh, cute little packaging right here. And I'll, I'll tell you what it comes with. It comes with paper, uh, outdoor, Mod Podge Matte, Mod Podge Gloss, and Mod Podge Sparkle. So they're all uh, wonderful formulas, and I think we've covered all of these so far. Mm -hmm. Right, Jess? Yeah, that's a, like a, we definitely have covered all of them. I think that's a really good one, like you mentioned, um, for, the, for the beginner. Two ounces of each one. You can, it's kind of like a little taste test. Don't taste it, of course, but like you just kind of <laughs> want to get your feet wet in all the different formulas of Mod Podge. That's a really good pack to pick up so you can just try out a little bit and see which one's your favorite. Yeah, for sure. And this is a great gift, too. Oh, if yeah. If you know a crafter in your life who loves Mod Podge, maybe they've never tried the sparkle or they've never tried the paper or the outdoor. This is great for the artistic or the crafty person in your life um, because I'm sure they've heard of Mod Podge before and I'm sure they'd be excited to receive this as a gift. <laughs> I know I would. Yeah, me too. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so Jesse, moving on, um, do you want to talk about Stiffy? I would love to talk about Stiffy. Um, so I kind of uh, hinted at this one earlier when we talked about Mod Podge Ultra because of stiffening fabric, but if you are doing some sort of um, project where you need to stiffen your fabric, whether it be, um, like I said, doily bowls or cheesecloth ghosts, or if you are trying to stiffen yarn for some sort of like little sculptural piece, um, it's really great for pinatas and things like that. We did some awesome 3D yarn eggs one year for Easter, then Stiffy is the go-to. So this formula has been around for a very long time. Um, it is kind of one of our craftier formulas in my opinion, but it is so, so fun. And it stiffens like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> so when you dip your fabric in here, whether it be felt or yarn or just regular cotton fabric, and you let it, you completely um, submerse it, you completely saturate it, I should say, and then let it dry, it will stiffen the heck out of it. It will be rock hard and super durable. So there's about a million different things I can think of. I'm actually gonna grab one project right here, excuse me. Here's a really fun little um, uh, mobile. I yeah. can not think of that word. Mobile we made, and these are just little circles of yarn. So all we did, we dipped our yarn in the stiffy, we kind of made it into a little spiral on our mat there, and we have super, they're like rock hard little discs. This one was really fun to make. It's a little, you know, boho beach vibes. And we put it with some driftwood on this cute mobile. Um, but just about a million things you can do. Anything you can think of where you're stiffening fibers, Stiffy is the formula for you. Yes, absolutely. Like Jesse said, every time we use Stiffy here in the content studio, um, you know, we let it rest overnight and then we come back and we're like, oh my gosh, did you guys see how <laughs> stiff this is? And we're like, we all know you what think Stiffy we is. We've learned by now, but it's every been around for years. We yeah. can't believe how stiff it gets. <laughs> yeah, it's always shocking how stiff it is. Oh, we love Stiffy, it's a crowd pleaser. Okay, so moving on to our next formula. This is another crowd pleaser. Um, this formula has a lot of different fans. It is our modern. Mod Podge Dimensional Magic. So Dimensional Magic is a little bit different than some of our other Mod Podge formulas. It is really great for adding 3D dimensional details to all of your projects. And I'll show you guys a great example of that. So here we have this sweet little gift box. And you can see on the tag, can you guys see that? Um, we have these really cute 3D accents added right on top of our paper gift tags. Um, and this is actually one of our specialty dimensional magics. We have our clear right here for you. 
And then we also have some, ir uh, we have an iridescent formula, a silver, and a gold. So I believe this is, yeah, this is our silver formula right here on our gift bag. So you get those really beautiful 3D sparkly accents to whatever projects you want to make. It, like I said, it's great for adding 3D dimensions on top of your project. It's also great for, um, you know, making, uh, for, for uh, I can never think of this word, for like flooding jewelry pieces. Oh, yeah. or bottle caps. Um, it's great for, you can see here on our packaging, and I'll show you guys an example of that. We have these sweet little pendants here um, that we added our dimensional magic to. So you can see it has that kind of dimensional dome to the top. Mm -hmm. I'll show you guys another example A lot too. of people really like to use this formula in place of resin for really small pieces, really small shallow pieces like this because it is still super clear and super hard. It's not good for deep projects, so that's when you'll want to use your resin, but for tiny projects like that, um, it is water-based and non-toxic, which is awesome. This is a really great alternative for things um, like that. Yeah, absolutely. So we love Dimensional Magic. It is just like the perfect little cherry on top to all of your decoupage projects. Okay, so we talked about Dimensional Magic. We talked about Stiffy. Jesse, do you want to talk about um, some really great ways to add a little bit of sealing protection to maybe some paintings or some um, projects that you want to seal? You want to talk about some of our aerosol formulas? I would love to. Um, so we have seven awesome aerosol formulas. I only got three of them here to show you because, you know, all the cans are pretty self-explanatory. Um, we have some really great aerosol formulas if you guys didn't know. And um, in case you guys are just kind of confused what we mean by that, there are these rattle cans. So you can find these at the craft store, of course, and on platonline.com. Um, but we have several different sheens and formulas that kind of give a different look to your project when you're done. All of these seven formulas will seal your project really well and keep them, like Emma said, super protected over time. They're great for paintings. They're great for just anything that you're trying to seal. Furniture, anything like that. We use these a lot for these projects. Um, anything you're trying to uh, protect over time, these formulas are great for. Um, so you can see here, uh, we've got a pearlized glaze. So just like the name, this gives you the really beautiful pearlescent sheen. Um, we've got our classic gloss and matte too. So just like our original formulas, you'll get those classic um, finishes when you're done, but again, these are an aerosol formula. And then we have some really fun, we have a super high shine, which is like the gloss, but kind of on another level. It makes it super, super duper shiny. Um, we talked about the pearl, and then we also have um, our iridescent glazes. So if you guys haven't seen those, I highly recommend checking them out. We have two different iridescent glazes. Um, one of them is just our regular iridescent, which just kind of shifts in the light. You get a really beautiful prismatic sheen when you're done. And we also have our green to gold shift. So that one's super pretty. Just like the name says, it shifts from green to gold in the light and so you still get that really beautiful prismatic sheen. So a lot of people don't know, we have these awesome aerosol um, formulas. Some people really just prefer aerosol. They feel like it's a little bit stronger for the kind of art they like to make. Um, so make sure to check these out as well. We've got, like I said, we've got seven of these. So uh, next time you're in the craft store, make sure to take a peek. Yeah, I love those aerosol sprays. They are really, really awesome sealers. They're super durable, mm -hmm. like Jesse said. They come in any type of finish that you would want to seal your project with. They are really, really great staple to have in your crafting corner. Yeah. Okay, so moving on to our next formula, we are talking about Mod Podge Puzzle Saver, which is a really exciting one. It looks like this. It has this cute little um, puzzle design on here, jigsaw design. So it is like the name says, um, if you are a big puzzle lover, if your family loves to do puzzles, those 1,000 piece puzzles, um, and then you feel kind of sad at the end when you have to put them back in their box, well, you don't have to anymore. You can actually preserve it for a lifetime with Mod Podge Puzzle Saver. So uh, it's super, super simple to use. What you want to do is you want to create your puzzle on a board or a sheet of wax paper or parchment paper. You apply a layer of your Mod Podge Puzzle Saver to the top, you want to wait a couple minutes, flip that guy over, and then apply it again to your bottom of your puzzle. So once you're done, you can um, just go ahead and mount it to your wall. You can frame it. You can um, display it uh, any way you want to because it'll be one solid piece once you apply your Mod Podge Puzzle Saver. So this is a really, really special formula, um, and it's definitely a great formula for the puzzle lover in your life. 
I love that. Yeah. Because I, I don't get puzzles, like how you just do them over time, then you break them up and redo them again in a few years. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it should definitely be it kept as art when you spend all that time on it. I know, especially those puzzles where it's like 5,000 pieces. After <laughs> I spend a month on that, I don't want to put it back in the box. Yeah. <laughs> I want to look at that and remember what I did. <laughs> totally. Uh, so that's a great formula for sure. Yeah. Um, and so we talked about all of these wonderful formulas of Mod Podge, but we also have some really great tools and brushes to help you apply your Mod Podge to your projects. And I can see over there, Jessie has a couple uh, brushes and tools that she's going to share with us. Yes, I have more than a couple. I think I have all of them. <laughs> so this is really exciting because, again, I think this is one of those things that a lot of people don't realize. We offer all these super fun tools, like Emma said, for applying all the formulas we just told you about. Um, but we have about every single tool you could need for decoupage in our Mod Podge line. So I'm gonna kind of go through some of these and just let you know some of the brushes and um, squeegees and sponges and brayers that we have that are all great for your Mod Podging needs. Okay, let's see, let's get started with the brushes, I think. So the first brush we have, um, this one is just called the Brush Applicator. So a really standard brush. It comes in these really fun Mod Podge colors, which never hurts. I love the Mod Podge brushes because they're so bright and colorful. Um, you can see here, you can hold onto them. It's a really nice, comfortable handle if you're doing big projects with Mod Podge. Um, and you have these synthetic um, gold tack-on bristles, which are nice and soft, which are great for Mod Podging. So really low brush strokes, hardly leaves any at all because they're nice and soft. This is a really great just sort of general Mod Podging brush. I love how wide those brushes are, Jesse. That'd yes. be great um, in addition with our Mod Podge furniture or hard coat. Oh yes, speaking of which, we have this giant one. <laughs> <laughs> so this is another brush applicator, which is really great if you guys are doing large furniture projects. So if you're decoupaging a dresser or a headboard or something like that, this is gonna really come in handy because you can apply a lot of Mod Podge at once and not have to have any brush strokes because it's so nice and wide. I know, we are crazy about Mod Podge. One of the very first ever Mod Podge projects was actually a decoupaged Volkswagen Beetle. Yes. So that would be the brush that you'd wanna use for <laughs> maybe a Volkswagen Beetle. That would definitely come in handy Beetle. for that yeah. project. Um, okay, great. So one of the ones we use the most here probably are these awesome Mod Podge brushes. They're called decoupage brushes. And it comes in three sizes, again, in the really fun Mod Podge bright colors. Um, and it again has that gold tack on bristle, which is nice and soft and perfect for evening out brush strokes. So you have a really short little um, bristle there, which kind of helps with brush strokes a lot of the time. And it's nice and wide too, which helps with, again, with the brush strokes with, and not having any. <laughs> um, but these are a really great one. You have that nice long handle, just like a paintbrush, which a lot of people are used to holding. Um, so another really good standard brush set. And then this one is also really fun. This one, um, more decoupage brushes. This has the white tack on, which is extra soft. So this is even better at getting those uh, brush strokes out because it is super duper soft. If you buy these, you'll see what I mean. But the best part is probably the really fun pattern on the ferrule. So <laughs> I just love the super fun mod, mod podge pattern that these have. They're just really fun to have in the craft room. Mm -hmm. Really brings you back to the uh, 70s. I know, it really does. When mod podge was created. I know. Um, so this is another brush pack we have. These are our detail brushes, um, and my husband loves these brushes. He loves them so much. These are great, just like the title says, for detailing. So if you're a painter, these are excellent for paint. Um, what my husband likes to do is painting miniatures, like tiny figurines. So these are his absolute favorite, favorite brushes to use for that. So if you know somebody or if you like to paint miniatures at home, I know dollhouses and stuff are really in right now and really trendy. I see them on TikTok. These tiny, tiny, super tiny brushes are great for little projects like that. Okay, let me make sure I show all the brushes before I move on. So this one is our brush applicator, and this is a nice round little handle guy, and this one is just kind of like a multi-purpose brush. So really great for applying some of our thicker um, formulas, like super gloss and things like that, because you get a really good control with the brush because you kind of are like really low down near the bristles. I love using that with our puzzle saver. Oh yeah, puzzle saver too, just for big areas. Like I said, you have lots of control, and again, really good for some of our thicker formulas. And then lastly, for application, we have um, our, our foam brush set. So these are, you know, a little, uh, really inexpensive when you're just kind of crafting on the fly and you want something quick and you don't feel like having to like clean your bristles really perfectly. I like to have these or just kind of for more for crafting, um, just for kind of like spreading on that Mod Podge for sealing, just to kind of get that down. Also really great to use with our kids washout. So if you have kids Mod Podging at home, really fun colors again, this is a really great option for that. And then we have a couple of brayers. So if you guys don't know, a brayer is one of these rolly tools. 
And this is awesome for decoupaging if you have like thicker papers and you really want to spread those out and remove any air bubbles. We have the two-in-one smoothing tool. And then we also have our uh, professional decoupage brayer. And each of these comes with a squeegee as well. So not only can you use it to um, roll on your project, this one kind of is behind. It comes with a squeegee and this one is attached. So you can really press those air bubbles out of your paper to make sure that you have perfect contact each time you're decoupaging. So these are a must have. If you guys are big decoupagers and big Mod Podgers at home, these are a must have for your uh, mm -hmm. craft room. A lot of times people ask us, how can I prevent getting air bubbles trapped in my Mod Podge projects? This is a really great mm -hmm. tool to have. Maybe you've never heard about it before, but we always like to have a brayer, a brayer and or a squeegee with us whenever we're Mod Podging. Yeah, definitely. And the last tool I want to talk to you guys about um, are our hot glue finger caps. So just like the title says, when you guys are hot gluing, if you're big crafters, I know you've all had some burnt fingertips at some point when you're hot gluing. It is hard to avoid, especially when you're really into your crafts and you're not paying attention. So these are a lifesaver. You can put them on your fingertips while you're crafting. You can press down your hot glued areas and you don't have to worry about getting burnt because they're made of silicone and they protect you from the heat. So I know Emma's had a couple of bad <laughs> hot glue accidents. We want to make sure we're being careful when we're crafting and these are a really simple, easy way to be careful. Yeah, I wasn't able to touch felt for like five years after that. <laughs> yes, okay, so the last one is resin? Yeah. Okay, cool, so I'm gonna go straight into it. I have it here. You guys, this is one of the most exciting Mod Podge um, formulas we have come out with in a very long time. So this was um, one of our brand new formulas last year. It is Mod Podge Resin. So if you guys have not heard about it, it is just like a lot of the other resins you see on the market, except better. Um, it is a two part formula. So you mix parts one and two together, just like a lot of the resins you may be comfortable with um, to get a super hard resin. Let me pull it out. A super hard resin project. So you can see here, this is what to look for. You can find this on platonline.com and in a lot of your um, local craft stores. But we came out with so many fun projects for you guys. So here's some coasters made with resin. You can hear how hard they are, which is awesome. Um, we were super excited to bring this to you guys last year because resin is huge right now on Instagram and TikTok. It seems like all you see in crafting these days is resin, whether it be coasters or tables or you know cutting boards and all kinds of things. Resin is a super hot trend. So you can use resin with all of our paints here at Plaid. Um, you can also use it with, we have these really fun alcohol inks that come with our resin or that you can purchase with our resin too. Um, we have made some really fun kits for you guys. So we have all kinds of different um, products that go with our resins. I have like a million things I wanna show you guys. We have molds for making all of those coasters. So we have a huge resin system. You can go on platonline.com slash resin to see all of this. We also have put together some really great um, safety information. So that's something we like to focus on here at Plaid. It's like we talked about the hot glue fingertips, <laughs> always being safe when you're crafting. So we have put together all the information you need so you can be super safe when you're crafting at home with resin because while it's a really fun product to use, it is not water-based and it is not non-toxic like the rest of our, pro our products here. So you wanna make sure that you're being super careful whenever you're using this. Like I said, you can make some gorgeous pieces but you just want to know what you need to know and I'll have all of the proper protective equipment when you're working with resin at home. So now we've gotten that out of the way, I'm going to show you a couple more of my favorite resin projects. Here we did this beautiful beach scene and this is actually one of our surfaces. We have wooden surfaces for resin too. I'll show you here. We've got our little things on here, but this is a piece of wood and it's got this beautiful sort of like river inlay. And then we painted it and we poured resin on it with our alcohol inks and we applied some sand and seashells using our resin. We have this beautiful, beautiful beach art. So again, you can find all the instructions for these projects on platonline.com. We have tons of resin inspiration for you guys using our two-part system. And then probably one of my favorite resin projects I have ever made is this fun create one. So this is another surface that we sell on platonline.com and it is again wood and you have these beautiful, um, sort of wells or like recesses to pour the resin in. So we included some folk art paint in this project as well as some glitter for this really fun create uh, sort of 
wall hanging. Yeah, I love that one too, Jesse. It is so fun to put in your crafting space or your kids' room or really just your living room. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you guys, we, I know we went over <laughs> a lot of Mod Podge formulas today. Um, hopefully, we cleared some stuff up for you about some of our specific Mod Podge formulas, which formula to use for whatever you're crafting with at home, which formula to maybe gift to a loved one that you think that they would love. As a reminder, if you were inspired by any of our projects or our product that we discussed here today, then please go to platonline.com slash modpodge where you can find all of this great product and of course, project ideas and inspiration. Um, are there any final questions, Jesse? before we, we close out? We have one final question okay. from Mike. They said um, they have issues when they are trying to decoupage with printouts, they print on their inject, inkjet printer, um, it smears and they try to put the top coat on. So they want a little bit of advice on how to avoid that. It is super duper, so just keep in mind, Mod Podge is water-based. So when it touches anything that will smear with water, it's going to smear it. So you just need to make sure that your inkjet um, prints are super duper dry. We do it all the time here at Plow with our inkjet uh, printouts. So you could, if you just feel like you're really frustrated with it, go and get a dry toner printout. That will definitely solve the problem. But as long as your, um, your printout is super duper dry, like maybe even give it a couple days, make sure that ink is super dry on your paper before you apply Mod Podge top coat, that really should make all the difference. So your, your ink doesn't smear when you're trying to seal your project because that could be super frustrating. Yeah, I'm, um, that was a great question. I'm glad that yeah. Mike asked that because we get asked that question a lot. Yeah. So it's glad, we're glad to be able to uh, help you yeah, guys out with all of your Mod Podge We had so many people, Emma, thank you very much. I had no idea there's so many formulas. Um, just tons of people joining us. So, uh, the Mug Life DIY said, I use Mod Podge in almost all of my crafts. So thank you guys so much for joining us today. We had a lot of fun talking to you. We're glad to have answered some of your questions. Um, like Emma said, for more inspiration and to see all of these products, you can go to platonline.com slash Mod Podge. Um, and we'll see you next time. Bye, Bye. guys.